My boyfriend lied about me for years to his best friend. Now their secrets have torn everything apart. I, 24F, live with my boyfriend, 25M, in a two-bedroom apartment in a major city, however. We have been fighting for almost a week because of a decision I made spitefully, and therefore I may be TA. It's a small apartment, impossible to avoid him for much longer, so I really need a third-party opinion on the matter. For some background, we've been officially dating since we moved in together two years ago when I graduated from uni, but we were hooking up for about a year before then. During that year we weren't together, my BF, let's call him Sam, and his best friend, let's call him Max, were living together in this house. Max, 27M, has been my BF's friend for years and is basically like an older brother to him. We've never really gotten along, but please believe me I have tried. It's just that Max never seems interested in getting to know me, or at worst gets genuinely annoyed by me interacting with him. Sam thinks it's probably the age difference, me being 24 and him being 27, that makes him not very interested in getting to know me. But I think that if he can get on with Sam despite the two-year age gap, then what's the problem with getting on with his girlfriend? Age gap aside? Anyway, it's besides the point, but I think pretty relevant for the actual argument. Basically, Max recently broke up with his girlfriend, and since he was living with her she rightfully kicked him out. Now before you ask, no I have no idea why he thought that he would still have somewhere to live after telling his landlady with benefits that he wasn't sexually attracted to her anymore, but I digress. Now Max is homeless and is asked to stay with Sam. And yes, if you're wondering, I also live here and pay for rent and utilities an equal amount to Sam. But I suppose Max only wanted to ask the person whose name is on the lease? All this aside, Sam doesn't want Max to come and live with us again, which works for me because I wouldn't particularly like to live with a guy who doesn't deign to speak to me living here either. I think Sam doesn't want him living here because he used to be a bit of a slob when they lived together, his words not mine, but I would imagine he also doesn't want another person in a small apartment. However, Sam clearly lacks the spine to say any of this to his friends, so who does he use as an excuse? Yeah, me. Apparently, he told Max how he would love for him to come and live with him again like in the good old days. But his stupid girlfriend won't let it happen. Now I could live with this if Max could act like an adult about it. But he's now started blowing up my phone with texts, calling me a bitch, calling me jealous. Literally just random insults that don't even address the main issue. And before you ask, they're so specifically cruel that I am afraid if I copy and paste them in here that it will instantly become obvious who I am. I've shown them to Sam, but he told me just to ignore them and just do him a favor. He argued that since Max and I already don't like each other there's no harm in letting me take the fall for this decision. This is where I might be the asshole because on day 10 of receiving abusive messages from Max, instead of ignoring him or blocking him, I just told him the truth. It was late at night, and I was tired and slightly tipsy from a bottle of wine, and Sam was out with Max, still enjoying his friendship despite the horrible things his friend was saying to his girlfriend. So yes, before you ask I was feeling vengeful and I think a lot of me did it out of spite. To be honest, the worst part is Max didn't believe me and if anything it only made him angrier at me. So in a way the only thing I succeeded at doing was breaking my promise to Sam not to tell him, simply because I let Max get in my head. After I sent the message I got a call from Sam but ignored it going to bed. When I woke up I assume a couple of hours later, I had an angry boyfriend in my bedroom telling me that I was an asshole, not the word he used actually, and that Max didn't even believe me. I then asked him why it mattered so much, since Max didn't believe me, but I think he had had one too many drinks because he couldn't answer me and went to sleep on the couch. It's been a week now, and we've been giving each other the silent treatment. Max has come over for a couple of nights, sitting on the couch and watching football with Sam, and giving me a similar stink eye but I've just left them to it and have moved into the guest room, partially to avoid Sam, partially to stop him from letting Max sleep here. So yeah, I'm typing this on day 5 of the Cold War from the guest bedroom, while my boyfriend is sleeping in our bed still angry at me for jeopardizing his friendship. Update 1. Well, for everyone who thought they might be sleeping together, you were right, I caught them fucking and sucking in our living room. Just kidding, but that would probably be funnier than this update is going to be a lol. So, I'm still here in the guest room, using Reddit as my only means of escape from my depressing reality. But for everyone who warned me that Sam would probably cave and let Max move in eventually, yeah he did and it only took one day since my previous post. They are not sharing a bed yet lol. Max has parked himself on our couch and shoved his stuff inside what used to be our bedroom. I was working from home this afternoon when the two of them started moving in, so I was able to grab everything and lock it in the guest room with me, barricade actually. Sam texted me asking me to talk to them over dinner, probably about future living arrangements since it's clear what is inevitable here, but I just told him that I was coming down with a flu and should be avoided. Even though it's annoying having to talk so nicely to him, I still have to live here for two weeks more before I can escape, so I'm trying to act as normal as possible. I'm really lucky that one of my friends is coming back from her work abroad in about two weeks, since her parents have arranged an apartment for her to move into, and she's invited me to stay with her there until I can find somewhere else.
It's been so difficult for me while she's been gone since she was basically my only friend in this city who wasn't also friends with Sam and Max speaking to her, even if it's the middle of the night where she is and she has no reception, has opened my eyes to how quickly I need to get out of both this relationship and this building. Girls out there, talk to your friends, they're seriously the biggest blessing you'll ever get. So yeah, if anyone has any advice to make these two weeks pass a little quicker, it would be appreciated. I think I'm still a devil woman in both their eyes, and our mutual friends are somehow taking Sam's side. I don't know if he spun them a different story, or it's just the fact that they were all his friends first, or even the fact that he's the baby of the group. Yeah, how did I not see that this was a red flag? But at this point it doesn't even matter anymore. Thank you to everyone who commented, showed interest and concern, etc. I didn't know how much I needed to speak to someone who wasn't friends with Sam. Hopefully my next update will be when I moved out, but for now I'm safe and grateful. Update 2. I thought I'd give those asking an update on how Sam and Max are reacting to my antics, see my mini-update if confused. I'm sorry to say that even though many people recommended taking the petty route, it hasn't yielded much fruit, and if anything I just feel more childish for doing anything. Before all of that, though, I need to give a little more background so that everyone understands why this past week has been so odd. So, Sam has always been a very conflict-avoidant person. I've never actually seen him get angry at anyone, or if he does he's more often just frustrated in the moment and then apologizes. This is probably why in my first post I was almost convinced I was the A.H., since he was genuinely quite upset with me which is something very rare in our relationship. I've always felt like we don't argue a lot because Sam was too forgiving, or spineless. I only realized that I still had the same mindset as my friends, that Sam was too forgiving and always a victim. When talking to my friend Daisy, 24F, the one who was letting me move in with her, Regardless of all that, I've always felt slightly guilty because Sam is genuinely a very sweet person who isn't very good at getting angry or holding grudges or anything like that. But then for a couple of days this past week he has felt like an entirely different person. I don't know if it's anger or resentment, or some secret third option, but he's been so quiet. I know I said in previous updates that he was acting civil, as though nothing had happened and that he was in denial about the breakup, but I think the denial stage has ended and the anger has begun. Today and yesterday he's gone back to acting normal, but I can't shake the weird feeling that I have, so I'm pretty sure that both our mental states are quickly degrading. First and foremost, please nobody panic, I am safe. I have a lock on my door and a support network checking in with me every few hours. However, since everyone has known Sam for years, and like me, they've never seen him like this before, it's really difficult to figure out what to expect from him. If anyone needs examples of the strange behavior, it's mainly just glaring at me whenever he sees me and stonewalling me, but I've also started to notice some of my things go missing. It could be from hastily moving them to my friend's parents' house, but a lot of them are sentimental items, so it's hard not to point the finger at the embodiment of a dark cloud that's just looming around the apartment. It why it's freaking me out so much, but maybe because it feels like a switch has flipped suddenly. I also feel like I'm the one being weird, though, because isn't this what I wanted? I literally played Baby Shark on my laptop all day today while I was at work, and while Max called and texted me asking me to turn it off I heard nothing from Sam. It was also a male co-worker of mine who installed the lock on my door, so yeah, I haven't exactly been acting kindly. I almost feel like a schoolboy pulling on a girl's pigtails for attention right now, but I feel so unsettled to have no verbal reaction, so I feel like a bit of an idiot. Like of course he's going to be angry if I do all this petty stuff. What did I expect? I still don't feel unsafe, but I think maybe my mental health has just hit a breaking point, and I can no longer pretend that it all doesn't get to me. It's weirder still that Max seems to agree with me about Sam's odd behavior. Two people who have hated each other for years have suddenly been united somehow by the the one they care about, so maybe that's a bit of a silver lining. Today, after I came and turned off Baby Shark, Max knocked on my door and asked if anything else had happened with Sam. I told him no, and that the sudden change in his behavior had nothing to do with me directly, just indirect pettiness. He just sighed and asked when I was moving out, saying Sam was only going to get worse the longer I stayed, to which I told him that it was none of his business if I stayed forever. A bit childish of me, I know, but it's so annoying for Max to try and take on the mediator role since that's usually Sam. He just sighed again and asked me not to play baby shark, that I shouldn't make him suffer for being in the middle of mine and Sam's issues, which I thought was very presumptuous of him considering how the fight started but whatever. I even started to feel, later on that night, very grateful that Max was here, purely because of how strange Sam was making me feel. So yeah, itching to get out and feeling not only guilty but frustrated that even if he's angered by my actions he still won't talk to me. Nothing I'm doing or feeling is rational, I know, but I feel like anyone who has been through a relationship breakup after two years might empathize with me. If you're reading this and you have any advice for how to get through not only losing your partner, but feeling like you wasted a massive portion of your life on them? Another thing to point out in my defense is that Sam was acting strange before the baby shark incident. I played it on my laptop in my locked bedroom while I went to work, 
so about eight hours, and he wasn't even home when I had my co-worker install the lock on my door, though maybe Max twisted that story. Can I possibly believe that it was me baking lemon drizzle and not giving them any was his breaking point, or did he just then suddenly realize it was over? Am I a bad person for feeling safe with Max? Please nobody comment any incel things like how my female hormones are telling me to side with the alpha male, or anything like that, I'll seriously die from cringing. I just need some reassurance that given the circumstances the fact that me and Max are suddenly getting on a little better doesn't mean that I'm somehow betraying Sam, even though we're pretty much broken up, and that I have no obligation to check in with Sam about his behavior. The good news is that Daisy's parents have been moving out my stuff over the last week, and now only the big things remain. If the situation gets too weird I'm just going to cut my losses and sleep in Daisy's old room in her parents' house, but hopefully I can wait a couple more days. That's right guys, Daisy's moved her flight and the apartment is all sorted. I'll be moving in almost a week sooner than I thought I would. Only a few days more in this hellhole. Maybe it's this knowledge that has made the apartment unbearable, just being so close to freedom yet not quite there yet? Who cares? My next update will be as a free woman can you believe it? I'm so grateful for my surrogate family out here, and that they're taking this messy breakup so seriously. If you think the Reddit posts are paranoid, you guys should meet Daisy's parents BC tell me why I'm the ones reassuring them all the time. Anyways, that's all the information I wanted to share with you guys. Sorry that it's low-key a mental breakdown full of paranoia and insane behavior. I'm not as mentally strong or mature as I thought I was, and I accept that. Update 3. For the last four-ish days I've been holed up in the guest bedroom while my BF either acts like nothing happens, stonewalls me, glares at me. I have been and am miserable, and if I'm honest I don't think that this situation is my fault anymore. According to Reddit I'm NTA for telling Max the truth, and Sam is TA for moving Max in and not communicating with me. I've tried to talk to him about the living situation to make it bearable, but he either snaps at or ignores me, and I don't want to make it more tense by forcing the conversation. What did my mind games accomplish? They made me feel like I wasn't a pushover. For every kind comment I get telling me that I'm a victim of a gaslighter, I get another telling me I'm the real spineless one for letting him treat me like that. I don't have that many people to talk to about this since my core friends have taken Sam's side, my new roommate is in a different time zone, and my boyfriend is the one I'm trying to complain about. Hence, I'm kind of in this Reddit bubble. So when I have several comments telling me that I should fuck with them, I jump to do it, because I don't know what I should be doing, just that I'm tired of sitting around doing nothing, of feeling like I am a victim, because I don't want to be. And yes, for a time I did feel better about myself. When my coworker installed a lock on my door and I saw Max texting Sam about it I felt like I'd really stuck it to them both, want to move in somewhere you're not welcome slash move someone in without your GF's permission. Well here, look at me. I can do something you don't like as well. You want to make me feel uncomfortable in my own home 24-7? I can psychologically torture you as well. Does it make me a good person? No, and I know it certainly doesn't make me mature or elegant or classy. I just wanted to feel different. Or at least I hoped if I acted out enough, maybe Sam would kick him out because he'd see just how upset I am. I'm sorry this has turned into an essay, but it's hard to get the feelings and motivations I've had across in less words. And yeah, I get it now, that his actions aren't weird when you put them in the context of what I'm doing, and that's why I'm grateful that I turned to Reddit for a second opinion, because otherwise I feel like I would have kept thinking that I wasn't doing enough to stand up for myself. Update 4. I really wish that I could say that both Sam and Max weren't there when I moved out, and I was able to subtly leave a note, but no they were both home. I also wish I could say that they stayed civil, but the minute Daisy's parents arrived it's like all the things Sam was holding back this week came out in the worst language possible. Nothing physical, don't worry, but I had no clue that such things could come out of Sam's mouth, so it was a bit of a slap in the face. Some examples of the monologue of insults were that I was an insecure psycho bitch, that I was cheating on him this whole time, that I was going to my new boyfriend's place and he hoped terrible things would happen to me etc etc etc, don't want to go into more detail than that if I'm honest. To Max's credit he said nothing, just watch the whole scene unfold. But there's a part of me that's fairly certain he's the one who put that shit in Sam's head though, getting harder to believe it's all his influence since it's clear that I don't know Sam like I thought I did. It was a difficult situation but I hope everyone will be happy to hear that before I slammed the door on them that I shouted that I hoped they would be very happy together. RIP to the final load of laundry that I forgot to take out of the dryer before making my escape, but Daisy says she would love go get it and rip into Sam while she's there. I've asked her not to for now, since I'm definitely done with any getting back at Sam and Max and just want to move on. My informant, I giggle every time I call them that but it's high time I reward him with a name, Ted 25M has let me know that Sam and Max have just invited the friend group over to the apartment for a party. I wonder what they're celebrating joke. It's a shame though, I think the vibe of their party might be slightly ruined when I sent them an album of screenshots showing Max's abuse and Sam's dismissal of it. Unfortunately I had no proof that he was lying to Max, we never discussed the lie over text, 
I guess because we live together so we mostly speak in person. But the texts where I'm asking him to back me up are still pretty damning, telling me to just ignore him or block him. Well, now they are both blocked, and I'm happy to report that I have not turned into a new Max. To thank Daisy for her help I've cleaned the entire apartment, bought this week's groceries and am currently giving her a back massage, the first of many. We're drinking Rose, couldn't drink Rose ever around Sam because he'd launch into a tirade about how awful it is, red flag, and we're re-watching Love Island is awful. But also awfully good. Any Amber Gill fans in the comments will be welcomed lol. Sorry if this next bit is too sappy and you can skip if you want, but I need to say it somewhere. I didn't realize how much I miss just being myself even if it means being embarrassing. Just now I laughed normally in front of Daisy. I have a bit of a snort laugh like Sandra Bullock in Miss Congeniality. And she said something along the lines of I missed you and your weird laugh and... I just started crying. On the surface I think it was because that was something Sam had never said but maybe deeper down it was because I realized I wasted two if not three. Years of my life on this asshole who didn't put me first and didn't even like my laugh. It's the first time I've cried since this all went down and I feel like I haven't had the time to mourn this relationship or this phase of my life at all. Now it's hit me all at once that it's over and there's nothing I can do to fix or change anything. I don't want him back, there's just a lot of complicated feelings that I needed to vent about somewhere. That's all from me for now. And as for advice, all I really want to know is how to make friends in a big city. Do I join a Facebook group? Reach out to old friends? Walk the streets begging? And maybe advice on how to get over a breakup where you realize the other person never loved you like you love them would be good to have as well. The adrenaline has subsided and the emotions are coming out. Update 5. Sorry to everyone who was waiting for this post yesterday, but the revelations that occurred after I dropped the screenshots on Sam, Max and our mutual friends were so crazy that I had to talk to everyone at the party to confirm the stories. Even now, there is so much to say and so much unconfirmed that I'm not confident this post won't have to be updated with several editions or revisions here and there. I'm also very unsure how to present this information without it sounding insane, but I've realized there is no way to present insane information without it sounding, well, like what it is. To put it shortly, Sam lied. To put it longly, Sam has lied to everyone in his life for several years to the point that I am doubting every interaction I've ever had with any of my friends or acquaintances and can't even begin to imagine the scale of defamation that he has brought upon my life. Insane, right? But before I get to the particulars, we should talk about what specifically went down at the party. I wasn't there, obviously, as it was a party to celebrate me moving out, so everything I am telling you now is second-hand information primarily from Ted, my informant, but also from a couple of other mutual friends who have since come around to my side. Around midnight is when I sent the screenshots I had collected. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any evidence of Sam admitting over text that he had lied to Max, but I did find several screenshots where he brushed off my pleas for him to stop Max from abusing me, and obviously I had many, many screenshots of Max's abuse. I knew that there were several people in the group who I had talked to about Max's behavior before who were supportive of me, and so I thought that I could at least save my friendships with them. I sent the screenshots to the group chat we had and then left and deleted it, turning my phone off and settling down for a movie marathon, the Alien movies if anyone was interested, although I fell asleep midway through Alien. Ted says that when the collection of photos dropped literally everyone at the party stopped. He said they were hanging out in the living room when one of our friends bolted upright and asked Max if he really texted those things to me or if the texts were fake. At that moment Max, drunk, apparently smirked and said yeah. Thank God that cheating us asterisk AG is back on the streets, which was when the rest of our friends looked at Sam. The man of the hour was pale and avoiding eye contact. Ted then asked if it was true that I had cheated, and Sam said nothing while Max ranted and raved about how shit Ted was for questioning Sam. Ted then asked again, and another friend asked if Sam had any proof. Sam tried to nod, but then made no attempt to show anyone any kind of proof. Max then seemed to sober up slightly, and asked Sam why he wasn't asking Kelly, one of our mutual friends, to show everyone the evidence, since you guys are finally broken up now so it doesn't matter if everyone finds out. Everyone then looked at Kelly who just looked confused, saying that she had never heard about me cheating, nor did she have any evidence of it. What did Sam say to that? Nothing. Maybe it was because he was drunk, or maybe he realized he had been found out, but he just stayed completely silent staring down at his lap. Eventually one of our other friends, Harry, asked Sam if it was even true that I was stealing money which prompted everyone to now turn to him. Sam stayed silent, and Harry then asked again, and asked if what Sam had told him last night was even true. My ex-boyfriend's lack of response then seemed to prompt other people to begin questioning him. I won't and can't bore you with the nitty-gritty of what happened next, since I wasn't there and everyone was drunk, but Ted tells me it all started to unravel after Harry's comments. Multiple other friends had been told that it was Max who was stealing money, and I think there was even a third version for some others, though I can't confirm. I don't know how precisely they started to figure out that most everything of what Sam told them in confidence was bullshit, but I hear it was pretty shocking. Ted tells me that the party ended soon after, 
with him and several others leaving, but other friends waiting for cabs told me that Max and Sam almost got into a physical altercation, and that their argument ended with Max leaving to sleep on Harry's couch. If any of that sounds confusing, please remember I heard all of the secondhand from hungover individuals who were drunk during it, and I've only shared things that multiple people confirmed happened. I was obviously told more unconfirmed details about how Sam lied about almost every part of our relationship in different ways to almost all of our friends. I know that each of them had their own private grievance with me that Sam had told them and then made them promise not to bring up to me. Yesterday when I first heard from Ted everything that happened and every lie that was alleged I wanted to write out a list of everything he's told different people. But it all looks so ridiculous, so made up and so hard to believe that I sounded genuinely mental. In my first ever post where I talked about this, I said that I didn't want to include any of the specifics of Max's texts because they might identify me, and that for the most part they were very random and not related to the housing situation. I'm sure you can guess by now, but it turns out they weren't so random. In many of his texts Max accused me of being crazy, or mistreating Sam and of frequently cheating on him, which I brushed off as just thinking he had taken the red pill and now thought all women were cheating gold diggers. I will reiterate as many times as I need to, I have never in my life cheated on anyone let alone Sam. I don't want to share too many personal details, but I will say that my family was ripped apart by cheating when I was a child, and it's part of the reason that I don't speak to my parents at all. People may have noticed that with how much I talked about Daisy's parents being, like, my surrogate parents in the comments of my previous post, but if I'm honest they're not, like them they are them. The closest people in my life for the last three years have been Daisy and Sam, and they both know this about me, but many don't not because I don't trust them but just because you'd have to catch me at an extremely vulnerable moment for me to speak about it at all. Anyway. All that to say that Max believed what he said to me was true, not because he hates women, hates me, or is jealous in either a platonic or romantic way, but because Sam is a fucking liar who has been telling Max these things for years. Max's list of lies is the only one I haven't gotten yet, as he's the only one I haven't spoken to directly. I have texts from him, well, from Harry paraphrasing the texts that Max tried to send me at 6 a.m. after the party ended, only to realize that he was blocked, telling me that Sam had been lying about many things including cheating, that he was so angry at him and so sorry to me. So at least I know that. I've unblocked him, called, and even texted Harry asking if I could have a proper conversation with him, but it seems that after crashing on Harry's couch after the party, Max disappeared and turned off his phone. If I had to guess I would say he probably went to Sam's apartment to get his stuff, but as for what happened after, only Sam knows and I am not unblocking him. Nobody else in the group has heard from either Sam or Max since the party, but it's only been about a day or so, so there's no cause for concern yet but I can't lie I am slightly worried. I couldn't have expected or even hoped for an explosion like this, and yet I've somehow come out unscathed and with my friends firmly back on my side. Whether I want them by my side after staying quiet about all the things I'm told them sorry confided is another story and I won't lie and say that I'm not enraged that they could hear such outlandish things about me and not say anything. On the other hand, there are also many things that Sam has told me about them that turned out to be lies, so I don't want to be too much of a hypocrite. In fact, this is why I'm so desperate to speak to Max, because there are several things Sam told me about him that could be entirely false, in which case we've been pitted against each other for no reason other than Sam's strange complex. I've already googled what medical conditions can cause compulsive lying, and so to answer some questions I foresee in the comments, no I've never seen Sam touch a substance other than alcohol, I don't know of any outstanding mental illnesses, and he doesn't have any medications he's meant to take, and I know of no previous trauma that could make him this way. Could I call up his mum and ask about his childhood and try to ascertain why he did what he did? Maybe. But I'm not his girlfriend anymore. I feel nothing other than contempt and disgust towards him, and I owe him nothing after he lied to me and everyone else for years. I'm sorry to say that that is where my update ends. I wish I had more particulars, that I could get in touch with Max, or that I could tell you why Sam lied or how he kept it up for so many years. I don't have the truth of anything, so I'm only left with lies and fires to put out. It's not a good feeling, and if I didn't have Daisy, her parents, Ted, or Reddit, I couldn't even tell you what I would be doing right now. Even with this loving community around me and so many apologetic friends spamming my phone I can't tell what I should do next. People say that the truth is what sets you free, but I feel as though I've become untethered. Or maybe instead, I feel as though I've just discovered that I've been untethered for years.